In this part, I'm gonna show you the third form, Wild Horse Parting Man. Again, it's just a name, and this form is simple and easy. From both steps of brush knee, please note that the body or chest is facing 3 o'clock at the end of brush knee. Shift weight to left leg. Remember to bend knee to the direction of left toes and lift right toes. Turn body to 12 o'clock and move right toes inward to 12 o'clock. Continue to turn body to 10.30. Shift weight to right leg and move left foot close to the right to make a toe step to bend right knee to the direction of right toes. Next, step to 9 o'clock to make an empty step. Shift weight forward to make both step and move the right heel backward slightly. Here the body is facing 10.30, not 9 o'clock. Go to the right side, shift weight to the right leg. Bend right knee to the direction of right toes and lift left toes. Turn body to 12 o'clock and move left toes inward to 12 o'clock. Continue to turn body to 130. Shift weight to the left leg and move right foot close to the left to make a toe step to bend left knee to the direction of left toes. Then step to 3 o'clock to make an empty step. Shift weight forward to make a bow step and move left heel backward slightly. Here the body is facing 130. Bow step and push left hand to 3 o'clock, and we are facing 3 o'clock. Shift weight to left leg, turn body to 12 o'clock, and move right toes inward to 12 o'clock. During this moment, move left hand across face and push to 9 o'clock. At the same time, turn right palm up and lift to shoulder level. At 3 o'clock, turn neck and look at your left hand. When move left hand, bend elbow and move left hand across face and then push to 9 o'clock. Like opening a curtain of window in front of face. Not moving either in the front or above the head without bending elbow. The function of this moment might help you understand this moment. Imagine you are grabbing the opponent's left wrist and pull him. At the same time, 
lift his elbow with your right hand. It is very mean because it may break the elbow joint if the power is big enough. Well, we are not focusing on the function; we just care about the moment. Next, continue to turn body to ten thirty. Shift weight to right leg and move left foot to make a toe step. During this moment, scoop left palm to abdomen with palm up. At the same time, bend right elbow to lift right hand and drop it to chest level with two palms facing each other as if holding a balloon. Scoop and bend. The ball is not too big or too small, medium size. The right hand is at chest level, and the left hand is at abdomen level. Don't drop right elbow. Both hands move in curves. Actually, the right hand moves in a half circle, up and down. Next, step to nine o'clock to make an empty step. And then shift weight forward to make a bow step. During this moment, ward off the left hand to neck level with palm up at nine o'clock. At the same time, press down right palm to the side of hip joint with fingers pointing to nine o'clock, about one foot away from right hip joint. Look at your left hand at nine o'clock. But the body is facing ten thirty. In form two, when we brush left knee and push right hand, the body is facing nine o'clock. It's a difference. When you ward off the left hand, move the left hand in a curve from the abdomen to neck level. It's not a pierce movement, but a curved moving. And don't put your right hand behind of your body, or point your fingers to twelve o'clock, pointing to nine o'clock, about one foot away from the hip joint. The function here is: you put the left foot behind the opponent, and make him fall over with your left arm. Well, the function just helps you understand the origin of the form. To the right side, shift weight to right leg, lift left toes, turn body to twelve o'clock, and move left toes inward to twelve o'clock. Continue to turn body to one thirty. Shift weight to left leg, and move right foot to make a toe step. During this continuous moment of steps, bend left elbow to lift left hand. And drop it to chest level with palm facing down. At the same time, scoop the right palm to abdomen with palm facing up. The two hands are facing each other as if holding another balloon. Don't drop your left elbow. You press your right hand here. How to scoop it? Make a circle with your right hand. Or flip over your right palm by turning your wrist. Next, step to three o'clock to make an empty step and shift weight forward to make a bow step. During this moment, ward off the right hand with palm up to neck level at three o'clock. At the same time, press down the left palm to the side of your left hip joint. With fingers pointing to three o'clock, look at the right hand at three o'clock, but your body or chest is facing one thirty. Move the right hand in a curve from abdomen to neck level, and press down the left hand.
shift weight to left foot, turn body to twelve o'clock, and move the right toes inward to twelve o'clock. During this moment, move left hand across your face and push to nine o'clock. At the same time, turn right palm up and lift to shoulder level at three o'clock. Turn neck and look at your left hand. Remember to bend your left elbow and move your left hand across your face and push to nine o'clock. Next, continue to turn body to ten thirty. Shift weight to right leg and move left foot to make a toe step. During this moment, scoop left palm to abdomen with palm up. At the same time, bend right elbow to lift right hand and drop it to chest level, with two palms facing each other as if you are holding a balloon. The right hand is at chest level and the left hand is at abdomen level. Don't drop your right elbow. Both hands move in curves. See the right hand moves in a half circle, up and down. Next, step to nine o'clock to make an empty step, and then shift weight forward to make a bow step. During this moment, ward off the left hand to neck level with palm up at nine o'clock. At the same time, press down right palm to the side of hip joint with fingers pointing to nine o'clock. Look at your left hand at nine o'clock, but your body is facing ten thirty. Move your left hand in a curve from the abdomen to neck level, and don't put your right hand behind your body or point your fingers to twelve o'clock, pointing to nine o'clock. Let's move to the right side. Shift weight to right leg. Lift left toes. Turn body to twelve o'clock and move left toes inward to twelve o'clock. Continue to turn body to one thirty. Shift weight to left leg and move right foot to make a toe step. During this continuous moment of steps, bend left elbow to lift left hand and drop to chest level with palm facing down. At the same time, scoop right palm to abdomen with palm facing up. The two hands are facing each other as if you are holding another balloon. Don't drop your left elbow. Next, step to three o'clock to make an empty step and shift weight forward to make a bow step. During this moment, ward off the right hand with palm up to neck level at three o'clock. At the same time, press down the left palm to the side of your left hip joint. With fingers pointing to three o'clock, look at right hand at three o'clock, but your body is facing one thirty. And you can move to the left again by shifting weight, bending the right elbow, and scooping the left palm. Ward off, and press down. To the right again. Repeat and repeat.
when you move and scoop left hand. Inhale. When you ward off the left hand, exhale. When you scoop right hand, inhale. When you ward off right hand, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Again, Tai Chi movement is non-stop. From start to the end, it is a continuous movement. I break down the forms just to make it easy and simple for you to follow and learn. But after hundreds or thousands of times of practice, you may taste the real flavor of Tai Chi, the smooth and fluid movement, like floating cloud. Of flowing water. In next form, the fourth form, cloud hand, we are going to taste this flavor even more. 